Hello everyone, my WGT account name is Whole Lion and uh, I'm here based on my friend John willing to take a risk to invite me to do this short video on how do we calculate side break. So obviously a lot of players go by feet, uh, some count dots and calculate, actually calculate the side break. So here is a very short video focused on one single aspect of how do we look at these dots that are moving across the line of the path and use that pace, use that measure into another formula as an input to calculate the break. Right. So I'm already on this green. Green speed here, as you can see on the screen, is 12. And uh, the putt is about, let's say, 8.3, <clears throat> going down to 8.3 feet, going down 2.2 inches. So basically four uh, data points that will go into calculating the break uh, for a putt. And you can guess that distance of the putt, the elevation, the green speed, which is all three information is as it is from the screen. And the fourth one, which is slightly tricky, um, but is required for the purpose and the topic that we're discussing is to calculate the dot speed. And what do we mean by that? <clears throat> Let me just try and explain. Um, basically, the dots move from, uh, on the screen they show, starting from the middle of the box, going to the edge of the box. Every time I click on this pointer here, they start moving from the middle of the box and go towards the edge. So one has to literally count the seconds that it takes for them to move this half the distance. Whatever that number is, let's say five seconds, use that, double it, so you get 10 seconds. For example, if the uh, the uh, it took five seconds for them to cross half the box, it would take about 10 seconds for it to cross whole, the whole box. And that's the dot speed. That's the number that one would use for dot speed. All right. So in this video, we we'll not be focusing too much on the power or what distance to hit. I think John's already covered that in another video. Uh, we would not be spending too much time either on approach shots or anything else. I think it's, it's a very short video focused on one aspect. And may I just add that it, the, what I'm using here is PC Beta. I started playing about a year ago. Uh, started with mobile and for the last few months I've been using PC Beta. Very happy with that. And uh, I like the big screen for putting. It's, it's very nice. So uh, let's look at this putt and see how <clears throat> we can apply numbers to a putt. So 8.2 minus 2.2 and now let's look at I'm going to go silent. I click on this box and I just mentally count an estimate of the seconds that it takes. You can use a method that you prefer. It, it does not matter. So it's about seven, seven, eight, eight and a half, something like that. Um, I would probably use and particularly because the ones that are closer to the hole are moving faster than the ones here. I would go and use 778 sort of as a good measure of the dot speed here. Um, so which is about 778 on an average, let's say we're talking about 7.2, 7.3, multiply that by 2. For the whole box, you're talking about 14.4 seconds as the dot speed. Okay, so now let's go to a sheet where I would explain this part 8.2 distance minus 2.2, about 14, 14.3, 14.4 as the dot speed, right? Okay, so our part basically it's it's a formula. Let's just look at the formula first. Um, scare you a little bit, <laughs> uh, kind of complicated to look at, but believe me, once you start using, understand it, it's it's not difficult at all. So the formula is basically distance minus elevation multiplied by green speed divided by dot speed. The whole number is then divided by 1.25, right? I have made an attempt here to 
break this formula down into four parts for ease of understanding. So part A is putting distance minus elevation, the numbers that we saw on the screen, 8.2 and minus 2.2 because uh, this was a this was a downhill part. So the number A is simply distance minus elevation and in this case because it is minus 2.2 it's 8.2 minus minus 2.2 which is 10.4. Part B is green speed which is 12 dot speed which we calculated about 14.3 and when we divide green speed by dot speed the number that we get here is 0 0.8 let's call it b the, the next step third step is to multiply a by b which in our case is 10.4 multiplied by 0 0.8 and we get the next number which is 8.7 look at um, whatever answer we get in c divided by 1.25 and you get your final result that's it calculations over no more number work so we get seven inches as the final answer for the part that we just saw the formula indicates that it should break seven inches sideways um, we've already covered dot speed it is equal to the number of seconds taken by dots to cross an entire box on the putting grid uh, in the easiest possible manner to define it now how do we use this seven inches the box that we have on the mobile grid let's assume it to be 12 inches the whole box and out of that we have to then visually check where the seven inches is out of those 12 and use that for putty okay so we had seven inches as the break as per the formula and that would be about close to 60 percent something like this this is about 60 this should be about 40 and I, without getting into the power calculation we can just simply use the putter pal here and go with the part Solid putt. All right, that was dead center. Happy about that. Um, now you get the basic sort of idea of how to calculate, right? In terms of the formula has four parts to it. Um, we said we look at four parameters that obviously any putt would require. Uh, but even when you are using feel, good ball. sort of estimating, right? How long is the putt? How fast is the green? How fast is the dots moving so it's the same thing same factors essentially gone in as as number work and you know using it as a formula there's no no difference there oops i missed the ting but the, this shot tends to come to the left so and it's a very short but i'm not sure if it is useful for us to see this one but let's say we'll try to make it a long over yeah it's too short so no point looking at this what we can do is maybe go here or go here yeah let's let's just make it a little longer Okay, let's see what we got here. Not very really happy with the break. It's too slow. It's too little the break. Maybe go sideways. And this course can be very tricky, right? <laughs> we know that <laughs> the greens can can go real mental in no time. Okay, it's a very short part. But I think still useful for us to illustrate. We're just demonstrating the idea here, right? So it's uh, maybe make it longer. It's not. I don't know. Okay. So um, we got a 10 foot putt here. Uh, again, 10.3 minus 2.2. I'll straight get down to business here. Count the seconds 
for these dots. So it's between seven and eight seconds. And it seems to be a bit faster on this view, like particularly these initial two or three dots are faster than what you see here. So at probably take as 6 and 7 about third, 6 and 7 average is 6 and a half we double that 13 so 13 13.2 kind of dot speed 10.3 minus 2.2 and 13.2 2. okay so we have 10.3 going down 2.2 13.2, 13.3, something like that. Uh, it's breaking 9 inches. Okay, so let's go back to our part. Okay, so on this grid, which let's say if this is 12, we got to estimate where 9 is, somewhere here. And again, using the putter pal for let's just go back. I think I probably so it's nine out of twelve, it should be about three seventy five percent. So let's see. That's half the mark somewhere here, and half of that should be it should be here, right? Okay, maybe I overheat it last time, just too fast. So here's another I think good example. We went back and tried the same formula, but with a little more attention to where should the cursor be placed on the grid and also the right kind of power that's a very important thing you know break calculation is only as good as what speed are you going to be using if you are if you put very firm obviously you'll have to go a little less on the break if you firm like go with very conservative putting then sometimes based on the dot speed etc you'll have to go a little more than what the formula is showing but here is a tool that gives you a number to work with and then you can apply your own adjustments or judgment or feel based on the power that you're likely to use and then go roll with the part that you think should work <coughs> all right so i've just set up a part which is an uphill part in addition to the other couple of examples you've seen it would be nice to see an uphill part going here it's about 15 feet um, let's just get down to estimating this right away. So the dots are starting at 8, going to 9, 10, and 11. So about on an average, you can say between 8 and 11. It's about nine and a half seconds or so and uh, because more more dots were on the faster side and fewer on the slower side um, so about 19 kind of average for the dot speed and 14.7 2.6 Okay, so 14.7, sorry, 14.7 up to 0.6 inches and dot speed of about 90. So it says it should break about 6 inches, which let's go back. Alright, so our sheet estimate is 6 inches, which is about half the box. 
and that's roughly somewhere here we're talking about um, uphill part quite strong in terms of the slope here so let's just roll with the part and see drained it right maybe a little little more power would have been better but um, essentially i think uh, we get the we get the idea of introduction of this concept using calculations numbers to estimate side breaks happy to have more discussions any feedback in terms of areas that if there are clarification things that can be done better or explain more happy to work on it if you'd let john or me know uh, thank you for watching for your time and uh, we look forward to be connected thank you